In this video, we'll think about rates of change in the context of pouring water into a pitcher. Here is a cup that already has some water in it, and a pitcher full of water. I'll play an animation showing the water being poured from the pitcher into the cup. As you watch the animation, think about the relationship between the height of water in the cup and the volume of water that is added to the cup. In particular, you'll need to determine whether the rate of change of height with respect to volume is constant, increasing, decreasing, both increasing and decreasing, or something else. I'll start the animation now. Many people would say that the rate is first increasing and then decreasing, because the top of the water in the cup appeared to rise quickly and then more slowly. But that perspective is comparing the height of the water to the amount of time that has elapsed. Here, we want to compare changes in height with changes in volume. And it turns out that the height of the water in the cup changes at a constant rate with respect to the volume of water that is added to the cup. Let's think about why this is. First, We'll zoom in so we can see the cup in a bit more detail. Next, I'll represent the height of the water in the cup. I'll use a black oval to show the water that was in the cup before starting to pour. I'll represent the height of the water that was initially in the cup using a green arrow. And I'll represent the change in height of the water in the cup using a blue arrow. Next, I'll represent the volume of the water that gets added to the cup using a red arrow. Let's rewind this to the start of the pouring. Now, I'll show this animation again. As the animation plays, think about how the height, the length of the blue arrow, and the added volume, the length of the red arrow, are changing with respect to each other. Next, I'll add black bars to indicate the change in volume. So the distance between the bars is showing the amount of change in volume. We can copy this length onto the height bar. Now, if we think about the amount of change in height, we can see that delta H is roughly one and three quarters as large as delta V. Let's rewind the animation. Let's play the animation again, this time incorporating the black bars to show the amount of change in volume. Now, it's not the case that the total height of the water was always a fixed multiple of the change in volume. This is because the cup had some water in it before we started pouring. However, what you might have noticed is that no matter how large delta V was, delta H was always about 1.75 times as large as delta V. This is what it means to have a constant rate of change. In this scenario, height and volume vary at a constant rate of 1.75 with respect to each other if the amount of change in height is always 1.75 times as large as the amount of change in volume. We can also think about how this would work if, instead of treating the added volume of water as a single large part, we split our volume into two equal sized parts. To make things a little easier to see, let's rotate the height bar. It's still the case that, for each of the two sections of added volume, the amount of change in height is about 1 and 3 quarters times as large as the amount of change in volume. What if we had used a different number of sections? Let's split the added volume into five sections. It's still the case that, for each of the five sections of change in volume, the amount of change in height is about 1 and 3 quarters times as large as the amount of change in volume. This was true whether we split the added volume into two equal sections or five equal sections, and would be true for any way of splitting it into equal sections. So a consequence of our definition of constant rate of change is, for every fixed amount of change in volume, the amount of change in height is constant. So now we have two ways to think about what it means for the height of the water to change at a constant rate with respect to the volume of added water. 